by the end of this video, you will find out why you should not buy this telescope, even though it looks pretty nice, actually, right? <laughs> Let's begin. Let's put it down for the time being. Okay, the reason I'm making this video is that on Reddit, every week I see somebody asking, is buying this telescope a good idea? So what do I do? I went out and tested it myself. I just couldn't resist it because, believe it or not, this thing cost $33. To give you context, if you are new to astronomy, this small budget eyepiece also cost $33. But here, for the same money, you are getting this nice box, this nice telescope, this nice tripod, some eyepieces, some barlows, some extenders. What is going on here? Like. Is it possible that this could be half usable? Let's find out. There are of course two pieces to this telescope. We have the OTA and the tripod. The tripod actually is not half as bad as I thought it would be. It's pretty stable, it's pretty nice to move around left or right. The big disadvantage is that it cannot go past 45 degrees. So that's a big no-no for astronomy because most of the interesting objects usually happen 45 degrees and above where you can see them the best. So from this point of view, already that's a big, big minus. Now the OTA itself is actually pretty well made. It's aluminum, <laughs> if you believe it or not. The focuser also is pretty nicely done. I didn't see any slippage or anything like that. We have the optical finder, which is 5 by 24, also pretty good. The aperture of this thing is uh, 70 millimeter. I measured it. It's not stopped inside. Sometimes they put a huge ring inside, so it can tighten the aperture. It can uh, lengthen the focal radio and uh, it can produce a little bit uh, better images without so much aberrations. You can still do that yourself. You have this mask which goes in the front and you can put basically an aperture stop and increase the focal ratio in case you want to have better stars with less aberrations. So to be honest, for $33 that's a pretty nice OTA. and. I, I think it's pretty, I think it's a great telescope to look at, like put it somewhere in a shelf, something like uh, a furniture piece, <laughs> something like a decoration in your room. It's perfect for that point of view. Looking through the telescope, uh, not so much, not so much. <laughs> what you also get are these two nice little eyepieces. Problem is they are 0 0.965 so you will not be able to find better quality eyepieces easily on the market. One is 20 millimeter, millimeter the other one is 6 millimeter. With the 20 millimeter you get 15 magnification in this telescope. It was kind of nice to look at it uh, for terrestrial viewing or also for Orion. Let me show you. Okay so a couple of problems. Looking through the finder is excruciatingly difficult. It has a very tight eye relief. It's very, very difficult to see anything. This one, that's as high as it can go. It cannot go more up. You are limited basically to 45 degrees of altitude. I am looking at Orion right now, and the good news is I can see the nebula. The focuser is okay. No issues there. The problem is, this keeps getting in the way. It keeps getting bumped into my head. I'm using the 20 mm for a magnification of about 15. The 6 mm is pretty useless. It's very, very muddy. And the bar loss and the stuff, that's just a scam. It's absolutely unusable. I was also able to see Jupiter. And Jupiter is basically just one small disk with the moons. You can't see any detail whatsoever. It's just 
one big bright light with a couple of dots around it. It's cold. Let's continue inside. I mean, as you see, there are some obvious disadvantages to using this telescope. But again, let's not forget it's $33. Not that much, right? What you also get is three times Barlow and an erecting eyepiece. What you need to find out in the manual is that these do not go into a diagonal. These are purely for terrestrial viewing. Now, what is the problem with that? And put this erecting eyepiece. It's very difficult to use this telescope. That's a little bit too much, too much magnification. Yeah. I tried my best to focus anything whatsoever in the horizon because this is supposed to be used for terrestrial viewing. I couldn't do it. Everything was muddy smeared up it was just a huge pain to use especially with these eyepieces which have extreme tight relief okay the 20 millimeter is not that bad but the six millimeter is just so painful to use in in this mode it's just very 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 difficult to find the exit pupil and use it in any kind of a nice way it was just painful so from that point of view i'd say these big things are pretty pretty useless we also have the standard phone holder so nothing to write home about i already covered this in a previous video i'm not impressed but again this one alone if you buy it on the market it will cost you ten dollars here you're getting a whole lot of stuff uh, with it but enough about the stuff what can you actually see with this telescope well the short answer is not much. The biggest problem I have with this telescope is actually setting completely unrealistic expectations to unsuspecting people. I mean, when you look on the box, it is pretty clear what Saturn should look like. Let me tell you something. In my 12 inch, only for a couple of nights, I was able to see Saturn in this major splendor during a night of absolutely perfect scene at 600 magnification. The maximum of this telescope, a useful magnification where stuff are not muddy and completely blurred, is 15. With 15, what I was able to see was a dot where it took me five minutes to make sure that it's actually Saturn that I'm looking at and it's not just some star. That's how misleading this is. And that's the reason why I'm returning this telescope. I just cannot bear to keep it in light of these false advertisements. In my view, it's simply a scam. Also telling people that it can magnify all the way to 180. Again, that's purely a scam. These two magnification pieces, they're absolutely useless. You cannot for any intents or purposes uh, use this uh, nicely or comfortably. Another thing on the box, the playouts, I guess you could see them in a little bit similar way, but you are definitely not going to see any nebulosity inside of them. They will be just dots. To give this telescope credit, the stars were pretty nice in the 20 millimeter. They were dots, they didn't have any noticeable aberrations. But on the other hand, the field of view of the 20 meter is like 38 degrees, maybe 40. That's very, 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 very small when you compare it to something like uh, a typical red line, which is 68 degrees. Huge difference. But again, let's not forget this costs $33, right? You've seen this before. It's my Olympus 8 to 16. You can find the link in the description. I really love these binoculars. This one can go from 8 to 16. And the image is pristine. It's clear. It's really nice. To be honest, the image in this one is a lot better than this uh, whole telescope. The problem is, last time I looked, this one costs $130, <laughs> which is $100 more than this entire package. So this puts me in a really difficult position, deciding whether I want to recommend this one or not. 
I'll say this. If you like looking at a telescope, it's a truly beautiful telescope. You can put it somewhere on the shelf. It's a nice decoration piece. And maybe you can take it out and look at the moon. The, look, the moon looks great in everything. So the moon in this one looks pretty good. Uh, I will not uh, doubt that. But also the moon looks pretty good in my binoculars as well. Especially if you put them on a tripod. Oh my god. On a tripod, through these binoculars, the moon is pretty much 3D. All very, very, very nice. But if you want to use this telescope to teach somebody about astronomy, maybe to buy it for your kid for Christmas and stuff like that, yeah, I wouldn't do it. I really wouldn't do it. It's very painful to use. Yes, I was able to see Orion, but other than that, not so much. Not so much. So there you have it. I hope I put this argument to the rest, like many others, that you should not buy this telescope even for the price of $33 if you want to actually use it to observe the stars, the moon and everything else. The planets, absolutely not. Jupiter, it was just a small bright disk, no detail, no nothing whatsoever, impossible to magnify even more. Yes, you can see its moons with some like bright dots, but we are expecting more these days from a telescope. That's it. Starting from the next video, I'm going back to real astronomy, to real nice uh, stuff. I promised you UHC filters. Some of you said that you are interested in that. I'll cover the UHC filters. I'll cover a little bit more what actually filters do. Until then, clear skies. Have a great evening. Time for me to pack this up, send it back finish the video and all of that over and out bye